I think we start with the obvious that uh, the Super Bowl would have been better had uh, the Chiefs and the Saints been playing in it, given how poor these two quarterbacks were. But anyway, that's a discussion for another day. Uh, today's today's assignment's been pretty light. We need to get back. We need to go through the disc method, which is lovely. Trying to do that without being able to look in your faces and figure out what's going on, and then we need to do the semicircular thing. And then I'll give you the last two problems for homework. So it's pretty much going to be a pretty simple thing. Hopefully you're paying attention to the last class period and have been thinking about it a little bit because now we're going to try to uh, prove those things that I was trying to prove last time. And it's going to be, uh, let's see how you do. Okay, so we had the formula for, we, we're, we're actually trying to find a disk. And we had the formula for a ring inside of that disk a distance from some spot. Again, this is a ring that is coming out of the page right there, half of it and half of it out, and the dot all on that, the, along the paper, distance x. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pretend like the disk is flat like this. And then another time, they'll be looking at the ring this way, right? And again, the, the distance will be coming out of the paper in front of our face somewhere. Okay? All right, and we want to know about a ring, some sort of ring that's in here. Okay. And so we were talking about it last time, and we said, okay, um, how do we figure this out? We recognize the same situation for a ring. And in fact, we already had the ring formula. The ring formula was kx over uh, over uh, kxq, right? The total charge of the thing um, over, and then it became x squared, the distance from the center, plus r squared, right? The distance. So x is this distance here, distance how far we are from the center. Then r is our distance how far out the ring is to the three halves power. And that's what we derived last time. And so now the question is, um, we're, we're now going to, to take the idea, we're going to say, well, this is just a series of rings, right? This disc, the solid disc is a series of rings. The problem with the rings is each ring is farther away because R is going to be different. R is going to be changing on each one of these little things. So I have to write the amount of charge that is captured in the ring that's captured in the ring, and there's one of these rings in the, in the inside of this thing. Good luck drawing, I apologize. Uh, one of these rings, right? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at one of these rings. One of these rings would be a ring, an inside ring like this. But the problem even extends from the outside to the inside of the ring, right? The outside of the ring is actually farther away than the inside of the ring. So I have to make these infinitesimally skinny, okay? And so what I'm going to recognize is if I take this and I snap this, don't cut it. Okay, if I cut it, I'd end up with something that looks like this. Okay, where this is the inside and this is the outside. And the area of this thing, the area of this thing would be the outside, would, would be, um, the area of this thing would be this height, right, times this length. As long as we made this skinny, we already agreed we have to make this thing skinny, don't we? Okay. So the area would be hat boy times this length. Well, this length is just a circumference, which can be written as 2 pi r times this width, which is going to be this little tiny, as we integrate from the center all the way out, it's going to be the little bitty distance we're sliding out as we go there. And again, we're going to try to make it smaller and smaller. So therefore, the outside, the top part and the inside are the same length because we've shrunk it down to zero. We're shrinking down to what we'd approach. So the area of this thing would be 2 pi r, area would be 2 pi r times this little bitty bit that we're going up and down, okay? That we're going to shrink till it's infinitesimally small, okay? And so the charge, this charge up here, the charge captured by the ring would be equal to a hat boy times the area, which we just said is 2 pi r dr, okay? And knowing that, now I can replace q, I can integrate from the where I have a radius of zero, the very center of the ring, so the center of the of this, the disc, all the way to the outside, which I'm going to call capital R, the biggest R, right, is equal, <coughs> which is the radius of the disc itself, is k x, and then q we're going to replace with two pi r dr, all over uh, x squared plus r squared to the three halves. And then we write our dr in place, right? Because we're multiplying r times that. Okay, so now that we're all in place, now we're ready to go. So this logic is probably 
shaky. You have to listen to it twice so you can hear it and understand it as best you can. Um, but ultimately, we're going to replace the, the, the key step is this one here to remember. Okay. The charge can be replaced by the area, or charge per unit area, times the area of one of these little, little rings. And the ring, we can't have an inside and outside being different, so we need to shrink it down to the point where it's infinitesimally small. The way we do that is by integrating each individual ring all the way out. Okay. And doing bigger, but then realizing as we integrate, we're going to shrink those rings down to where they're their width is essentially zero, okay? Um, and add them all up, and that's what an integral does. Okay, so recognizing this, I set u equal to the bottom because that's what's ugly. Oh yeah, we're just doing that right now in class, and this where it really nicely balances out. And so that's the case, du is therefore equal to 2r dr, okay? And that's nice, look at it, I got 2r dr sitting on top. And so, um, I'm going to pull out everything that's a constant. So I look over there, I go, K and X are a waste of time. Uh, two pi is a waste of time. That's not doing me any good. So I get the integral from 0 to R. Um, and I've got left over 2R dr over X squared plus R squared to the 3 halves. I'm ready to turn this into a U substitution, so I might as well do so. I'm going to get KX 2 pi. Um, now, I'm going to plug 0 into my equation. If I plug 0 into my equation for r, I get x squared on the bottom. On the top, I'm going to get, when I plug an r in there, I get x squared plus r squared. Agreed. And then I've got 2r dr, which is going to be du, u to the negative 3 halves. Okay? And so then I'm going to, when I take the integral, I'm going to raise this power by 1, u to the negative 1 half, okay, and then divide by the power I get. So I've still got my k, I've still got my x out here, I've got my 2 pi out here. I'm going to add to it uh, negative 1 half, flip to multiply, become the negative 2, okay, and then uh, that's going to happen from x squared to x squared, okay, x squared plus r squared. What the heck happened there? Oh, I can't write it. x squared plus r squared. Okay, and so ultimately I end up with this awful expression, but it's one I can deal with, and that's equal to negative 2 kx to pi over the square root of x squared plus r squared minus a negative 2 kx to pi all over um, square root of x squared. And then I can plug in my values for x and r and all the rest of them and get my lovely answers as I see fit. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. So that's what the how you find it for a disk. Okay. I'm going to pause this. And then I'm going to uh, start another one um, relating to how you deal with the um, finding electric field from a semicircular rig.